Canton's podcast. We talk sports. Canadian sports. <laughs> uh, I better get on getting an intro for this podcast. You've totally. said that for a year. I know. It's not no, happening. I said that for like six months. We'll go back to the tape. We're on episode 57, <laughs> by the time it was like episode 20, that's when it was. But that wasn't a year though. Yeah, we missed so many episodes. <laughs> Anyways. Hello and welcome to Canis Podcast, episode 57. I believe it's Anton, Anton Lander. Lander. That was, a was that his award. name? Anton Lander was okay. his name, yeah. Or uh, we also have Raphael Lavoie. I Ooh. believe he wore 57 when he got called up, or when he played in the preseason. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, today's episode, I mean, there's a golf tournament going on right now. There's a Canadian in contention. Nice. Which is nice. It's, and it's a decent sized tournament with a bunch of the big names that are there, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then you have um, Blue I mean, Jays still playing Blue pretty Jays well. Blue Jays pretty well. Yeah, they got swept by the Phillies, but they uh, they started off with a big win against the yeah. Braves. Did you see what uh, Chris Bassett tweeted after no. the game? So Chris Bassett was a starting pitcher, the, the first Blue Jays pitcher to get a complete game shutout in a few years. And he tweeted, he's like, hey, I appreciate all the love, but really the love got has to go to my wife. I had a very sick child last night, and she di- and she had took zero sleep so that I can get my rest for the game today. So, Dang. Yeah, isn't that cool? That is pretty cool. That's awesome that he, that he tweeted out. Oh, good teamwork, the two of them. And, and she's like, oh, and I forgot to mention, she is hella pregnant. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh that's that even one? cooler. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was pretty nice. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was yeah. Bassett is probably now parent parenting again. <laughs> uh, another game. Well, he's today. probably not going to start for or play yeah, for a while. Five so games, right? so yeah. we got Barrios starting today. Kikuchi, the next game, and then we're back to a Manoa. And what's nuts about the Blue Jays is our best pitchers have been the four or five pitcher, and then three our worst pitcher pitchers, Bassett yeah. has been okay, and then one two have been just not good, which is shocking to me. Like, Gossman and Manoa have both not been, like, their usual selves. Yeah. They'll get out of it. Like, they're oh, yeah. really good pitchers. But... And it's still kind of early, so. Oh, yeah. Like, they still have time. Lots so. of time. But... And, like, looking at the AL East, it, we're pretty much in good hands going into, like, the playoffs if it started today kind of thing. That so. AL East is the best division <laughs> in all sports, not even just baseball. Like, there's no, tell me one other division that's, like, elite top to bottom. Like even the Red Sox, who are like bottom, lower, I can't think of anything. Else. But like the Red Sox have played mostly AL East opponents. Like if they once they play non AL East opponents, they're gonna their record's gonna shoot up to over five hundred easy. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, anyways, um, I think it's all about the Blue Jays. Like there's not much, there's not too many big surprises apart from the Manoa Gossman slow starts. I don't think that's, I don't think there's anything else about the Blue Jays. No, we don't have to worry about them because they'll, like you said, they'll. Eventually break out of their slump and then yeah, well we'll they should right, they absolutely should, Um, and then I mean with golf like he last I checked the Canadian was one shot back of the lead, uh, and that lead is being held by Scotty Scheffler who's playing just unreal golf as per usual. Mm -hmm. And I forget which Canadian was oh it's Mackenzie Hughes, and now he's two shots back, but he's still in the final group of the lead. Yeah. That's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. So I, I think he, he bogeyed hole one, uh, but he should be okay. Yeah. It's the Byron Nelson Invitational, so it's a pretty big tournament. You got some decent names in there. You only had two Canadians make the cut, and Adam Hadwin and Mackenzie Hughes. So Canada's been consistently like in contention for various different tournaments, and it's not just Corey Connors. It's like Corey Connors, Taylor Pendrith, Mackenzie Hughes, Adam Hadwin won a mm-hmm. tournament this year already. You have the Gilch, Glilch guy. Who's like been a top ten at, yeah. at one point, and, and Nick Taylor as well. Like we have like six PGA Tour pros out there right now, which is pretty cool to see. Yep. None of them are like unreal elite, like the John Roms or Scotty Scheffler. But they're like world, hanging they're in all... there with the best of them. Kind yeah, of them. yeah, and like you, you ask, like you, you look at the, you know, you look at the the video or the, like the broadcasts and everything. And they all mention like Corey Connors' his Iron Game is elite. So yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess we have to go talk about hockey now, even though I'm pissed. <laughs> yep. So, at the time of the recording, Toronto got eliminated um, in overtime. Uh, did you see? There was, like, photos going around of, like, uh, 
of Gudas just screaming at Hall's face after they scored the overtime winner. That like that's a really that's a really cool picture, but like. It's unfortunate that it's against uh, Toronto, but um, and then Edmonton, they lost against the Vegas Golden Knights four three. Eh, like they started off well and then they just let in like four goals, like right away, and then they just had to play catch up for the rest of the game, and it's like you you can never like count the Edmonton Oilers out, um. They do, like, get comebacks like this, like, sometimes, but it's against Vegas, so it was a, I guess it was a little tougher. And then missing their, both teams missing their top defensemen, um, seemed like it was going to be, like, a bloodbath, but it wasn't. It was pretty close near the end. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, if... They have to, the Oilers have to uh, start strong again and just keep it up because they are in the brink of uh, elimination going into tomorrow. Yeah, into Sunday. Into Sunday. They, they have no choice. They have to play the best game of the season tomorrow and they have to play the, the, their best game of the season at that point on yeah. Tuesday. Like, there's no, Vegas is way too good of a team to be playing as garbage as they have and inconsistent. Like, the issue they've all they scored goal they've scored first every game this series, but in the games they've lost, they've given up the tying goal within seconds. Yeah, how is that okay in any way, shape, or form? Like they get their foot off and the they're gas all, and then like, they let I, them go. Like I know you want to start your starter all the time in Stuart Skinner, but I say oh, you have Jack to Campbell's you have to start Jack. Hundred percent is yeah. Jack Campbell's crease. Yeah, you have to start Jack. Campbell. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like, there's there's <clears throat> zero question that it, this has to be, this should be Jack Campbell's crease right now. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, if he, he plays the way he's been playing in relief, he should be able, it's, it's more difficult to be a starting goalie than, than a backup, because the backup, you go in pretty much no pressure. The game's really yeah, over the, pretty yeah. much, right? Yeah. And the other team didn't do any scouting on you, pretty much. I mean, they probably well, did, yeah. but not assuming, not as much as they would have on the starter. Yeah, exactly. So... It'll be tougher, but like the Oilers just have to come out and put a significantly better performance. Like let's let's not sugarcoat this. Like Vegas is an exceptional team, and they deserve every ounce of credit that they're getting for how well they're playing. And I think their weakness is their goaltending, and I don't know how we're not just lighting them I, up. I could not agree more. I do not know how Aiden Hill made all those saves last yeah. game. Uh, it's we're we're making <clears throat> it too easy on them. Uh, Aiden Hill is an NHL goaltender, a legitimate NHL goaltender. If you shoot easy fluffers at him he's gonna he's stop gonna him every him. single yeah. time do what we've done against corpus Allo and just you know point out all of the flaws that he can do and just start and just score like this is just embarrassing like their effort didn't start to pick up until like midway through the third period last game and it last always 10 happens were too. unreal they played really well in the last but like vegas also played unreal in the last 10 yeah. minutes because they know how to shut a team down they left us all to the outside and let Aiden Hill have the easy shots from the outside. Like, it's so obvious. It's, yeah. Ugh. Listen, these guys have not put together two straight good performances in the second round at all. Um, it was awful, good, awful, great, awful. Now this one has to be perfect and perfect Seriously. in order to get to the third round. Yeah. Um, I, whoever wins the series, I've said it a million times, is winning the cup in my opinion. Like this is just too. St these are two strong teams, but the con goaltending is a concern. So if Jack Campbell can come out and, and play how Jack Campbell can play, then we're okay. Yeah, you know, or how Jack Campbell has played the last like month of the season, the last his last few starts, then we're okay because these guys. But this is just not good enough. No, it was not good enough. Again, like the new chime in Evander Kane not doing much. Um, Nuge's defensive play was on, is has been incredible. It's just his offense needs to improve. Yeah. Um. And then the Ryan McLeod Fogel Ryan line has been our best, cons most consistent line in these playoffs. Yeah. Bukestad, Kostin, and Yanmark were barely given a shot out there. Like they weren't playing much. Um. But they're Kostin is the only one that isn't dependent of the killer. But Bukestad and, and but also then like. So our two minor penalties that gave him a five on three, they're both actual penalties. So the Oilers oh, yeah. fans are complaining about, you know, the refs being like, "Get out of here, dude!" Like this is just absurd. It's absolutely ridiculous, and it, it, it's 
like yeah you can probably b- blame the refs for most most things but when it actually like was their fault like the Oilers fault then you can't yeah, really it's a, blame it's an them actual yeah. penalty yeah it's a, it's a legitimate penalty yeah. like it's just ridiculous how they would oh anyways <clears throat> they they need to smarten up and and they cannot give up three goals they had the game pretty much under control while not playing a very good game until they let in those three power play goals within two minutes of each other. Yep. Like, that's not okay. Like, you can't expect to win a single game by, like, just stopping, completely stopping and trying in two minutes. And, like, they were not great goals. No, they weren't they great were goals. They were lack no. of effort goals by the Oilers. And good <clears throat> on Vegas for putting themselves in the position to get that goal. Yep. Or get all three of those goals. Yep. Just, oh, it's so frustrating watching these guys play because you see the potential. This is a good enough team to win the cup. Oh yeah, even with our goaltending, we we have the potential to win the cup. But so frustrating. It's just the lack of effort is just always never there until it's too late, and then they pick it up, and then they either barely make it or they fall short. And you know what? I don't, I don't question that they're trying. I just don't think that they're doing it the right way. Yeah. Like there are last game, they didn't finish any of their checks. Hardly ever they were pushing. It. Like when they were pushing, that's when Vegas was like sitting back, and that's when like the play was was the, like they they were back checking really well. That's for sure. They they did a bunch of very good back checks, but they weren't hard on their sticks. The one high sticking penalty was the opposite of being hard on his stick. That's just yeah. letting your stick go. And obviously Eichel's going to sell it. It hit him in the face. 100% it hit him in the face. And obviously he's going to grab his face to let the refs know, hey, hit me in the face, by the way. Like, yeah. you know. And then, you know, the, the Eichel penalty that he drew um, on Broberg. Eichel st- stayed on his toes. He was on his feet, moving his feet all the time. That's something Broberg didn't do. It's like you can't coast for even a second in the NHL, and nope. especially not in the playoffs. You have to and keep they your coasted feet at the worst possible time. It was three piss poor minutes in the game, and then the rest like forty seven mediocre minutes, and then ten good minutes. That can't happen. Nope. You can't even have a minute of piss poor hockey because Mm-mm. those three minutes that was two, th- three penalty killing units in our top line. That's inexcusable. Yeah. You can't have that happen. So they'll figure it out. I have. I don't question that they'll do well in game um, six. Game six. I, I think they should do well, and I, I think they probably would bring it back to Vegas. But I very much question their ability to win in game seven. Yeah. And if things don't start going well in game six, I I question them. Uh, you know. Game six, they need to pretty much blow them out like they have yep. the last few games. They need to be up three nothing in the first after the first. Otherwise, it's this is not this this series is over. Honestly, like Vegas is just too good of a team, even with their third string goalie starting right now. Like, just yeah, it's there's no excuse for it. But good teams, I guess. But anyways, um, should we just talk really quick on Toronto, like? You were, you mentioned the Rako Gudis thing. I thought that was completely classless. You, you congratulations, you won the second round. Uh, you don't need to rub it Just in. Just rub like it in his face to the goal to a rookie goalie who was outstanding. Joseph Wall was exceptional. Yeah, absolutely fantastic for that for, for the game that he came in. Um, they did not lose because of him yesterday. Oh no, whatsoever. Bobrovsky was unreal. The, the no goal, in my opinion, was the correct call. There wasn't conclusive enough evidence to prove that it was a good goal. Um, which is, you know, probably pisses Leafs fans off, but whatever. I don't really care. It's, I, I, I don't think, if it was called a goal, I think it stayed. Whatever yeah. the call on the ice was, it stands because there's not conclusive evidence to prove either side. And then they're like, oh, well, the ice, the puck did cross the line. But after the play was obviously dead and Bobrovsky stood up, they released all those screenshots on Twitter and everyone was like, look at Yeah, him. I like, saw that, yeah. Yeah, it's in because the play is dead and he pushed <clears> it into <throat> his own net when he stood up. Like, you can see it clearly moving. And when, like, in that replay, if anything, it actually gives you conclusive evidence that it didn't cross the line because you see how it moved and you see that from where it started to where it finished it was very it crossed the line completely oh yeah but to cross the line it had to have already been on the other on on the other side you know what i mean yeah no yeah so 
I thought that was... Like, I don't think I've heard, like, I don't think the whistle was blown either, but it was basically dead, so... Bobrovsky isn't going to stand up unless he knows... Yeah, exactly. Dead, right? Yeah. Like, there's no way. I, and it, that's another tough part, right? Yeah. But, but I think the play, um, the situation room said something along the lines of, like, yeah, that second jab was what put the play dead right away. Like, it was very clear that the play was dead at that point. Mm -hmm. After the second jab from Riley or Marner, I can't remember who it was. But I think it was Riley. Oh, what a what a game by him, eh? Oh yeah, what a game by him. So, what do you think happens now with Toronto? Like, they made it out of the first round finally, but they but then they just lost right away, basically. Yeah. So, like, what do you think happens to them? Is it a full rebuild, or do they bring it back? Again? Uh, I don't know who's who's on. A lot of them are on contract still, a bunch, except for like O'Reilly, but like he's not going to take like a a fifty to eighty percent pay cut to yeah. stay in Toronto. No, he's probably leaving. Um, They're not a good enough team without O'Reilly. I'm going to tell you that right now. They're not making it <clears> past <throat> the first round next year if they don't have O'Reilly. But then they're going to have to, like, either trade or just, like, not sign anybody. And then that they're, all their cap space is just going to go to O'Reilly. And then what are they going to do, right? So, I don't know. It's It's going to be tough. I know that. Uh, I don't. I don't think. Mm, I think there are going to be big changes in the in the off season. Uh, and I think there should. Yeah. Because yeah. I think Matthews is done next year. Do you think Matthews resigns in Toronto? If they don't get past the second round next year. He was a huge part of the problem. He had no goal. Like, yeah. He was horrific in the second round. It's like similar to, like, you know how McDavid and Drysaddle we were always like, oh, are they going to re sign? Are they going to ask for a trade right away? And for the beginning few rounds in the playoffs, they were like, actually, McDavid was more part of the problem than Drysaddle yeah, well, at that, that point. Yeah. But now, now it's not because they're both just ridiculous. They won the scoring. Lead, like the scoring race in, in the last year's playoffs and they didn't even play the full playoffs. The full playoffs. <laughs> they just played like, play like two rounds and like four games. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> what was he going to say? There were three rounds, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and they got swept right away. Too, honestly, right? if they don't if they don't make it past the first or second round next year, then I think he's gone. Dry side has cooled off a lot too, eh? After the first two games. Yeah. Not a knock on him, I don't think, because he's still an elite player and he's still the second best player in Stanley yeah. Cup playoffs history. But um, if we're if we have any chance at you know making it to the next round, it's got to be dr the dry side of McDavid show, and our defense has to step up. Yeah. But I also hope that they hit Petrangelo with everything they have in a clean way, but they finish every single check on him. Uh, and if the game is like out of hand at the end, I hope one of our fourth liners just breaks his like breaks the stick over the wrist like he did to dry. So it's only worth a one game suspension. Apparently, apparently so. yeah. What do you think of that? I Where Nurse awful. got one and then I thought it was got the one. easiest thing that the Leafs could have done, uh, and I think it's awful. How does an, a genuine <clears throat> assault get the same amount as two willing people fighting? Yeah, and and then and Hag is the one who was instigating more than Nurse. Hag's the one that wanted to fight everyone. Nurse is like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Like, how is that Nurse like getting sure, the instigator? That's like, just sure, so Nurse uh, basically skated from the bench to Hag, but like they were willing to fight. So, I got um, I got banned from Twitter because of how much you got I, banned from Twitter. Yeah, for like I got a twelve <laughs> a twelve hour ban. <laughs> I ripped into the <laughs> NHL player safety though on there. I, I didn't know you got bad. It. Yeah, twelve hours. It was pretty bad. Yeah, I ripped into them though, so, so you don't even understand. What did you say? Oh, just how I hope that they get hit in the in the neck with a stick like Petrangelo hit dry style, and I'll be the one like yeah. They're just and like the inconsistency. They don't care about their players. I stand by everything. Oh yeah, no, right. they they don't care about mm. their players. They don't care about player safety. They don't care about their fans. That they're all they want to do is to make it easy. They have no idea what they're doing. That they should all be an absolute. They're like mockery even, to all sports, not yeah. just hockey. Like even in the the other games, like where Bennett like got like no penalty or anything. Two games. 
Minimum should have been two games. Yeah. That's a slash in the neck, in the back, and then a boarding right after. That's absurd. Yeah. That Colasar boarding should be a suspension. Oh, yeah. But they're not going to give no, him anything. No. Because he's probably he's like a fourth line. Um, yeah, like, Petrangelo should at least have been like two. It should have been more than what should have been nurse more got. than nurse. Yes, yeah. that's slap in the face. The nurse got the same amount of. Yeah, and now, but now and both regular season instigator calls got called back and not suspensions. It's so dumb. It, they just wanted to make their lives yep. easier. Like, oh yeah, we'll take away one of the def- one e- one defenseman each way. We don't want to intervene or do anything. Well, that's his fault for slashing dress out on the in the hands. So he should. Get I hope more. the Oilers get back at him, but in the, in the cleanest way they can. I, they shouldn't be taking penalties against Vegas for that, um, but <sighs> it's just annoying. Yeah, it's I'm I'm annoying. hoping that next week's episode we actually record because if we lose next round, I'm not recording next week. I'm taking it all to drink. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully we hopefully we win so that we can do the, Even the if next we win, episode. I might be still celebrating too much. We'll see. <laughs> no, I won't celebrate until like Cause there's no be... celebrating until the Stanley Cup Finals there, and even then, it's <clears> until <throat> we win it. I, I'm I'm no longer celebrating playoff wins until it, like the cup is being lifted because this is where I think this team like should this be. team is good enough. I, it's just yeah. like we said, like our defensive like meltdowns are like pretty frequent from the looks of things in this round. Um, but um, and then our goaltending, like sure, most of them aren't Skinner's fault, but like he should save most of them too right so yeah like this team is has the potential to win it it's just we just have to like shore up everything just play sound safe hockey and just let mcdavid dry saddle and all and our offense just take it away we'll see we'll see i'm i'm nervous yep I guess we'll see what they're made of. Like, they've shown up when they needed to so far in these playoffs. And mm-hmm. last year in the first two rounds, they absolutely have. Now that we just... They need to do it again. Yep. And it's everyone that needs to set up, a step up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone. So, just got to smart up. They won't take undisciplined penalties. We deserved every penalty we got. But it was way too many penalties last year. Way week. too many penalties. Uh, don't take any undisciplined penalties. And... The five minute boarding call, we got three penalties and scored three goals. Oh, sorry, we got three power plays and scored three goals. But the five minute boarding call, we should have gone, we needed to have gotten two. Obviously, two, because it's like it would have tied the game up. But they, they needed to have done a little bit better in that sense, too. Yeah. Like the intensity, like they needed the game yesterday, they needed to trade like they're treated like their playoff lives are at stake. I believe that every single, in the playoffs, you should play every single game like it's game seven. Yep. And I didn't see that intensity from them. Nope. Not until the last 10 minutes. Because they realized that their playoff lives are at stake. The odds are they only have a 12% chance at getting past this round now. Just statistically speaking from previous years. We did it last year, except we play it, we won away and then won at home. So now we have to win at home and then win away. Yep. But we'll see. We'll Plus, see. Vegas is a better team than LA was last year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Anyways, I'm starting to get pissed off about the Oilers, so I think we should stop them. <laughs> I think we should, yeah. Okay. Uh, F1, was there anything? There was a race, right? Nope, there was no race. Oh, I'm thinking about last week's race. There was last week's about. race, yeah. Yeah, and Gasly, or no, Gasly. Stroll. Stroll didn't do too well. He finished out of the points, but yeah. he's he's still doing really well this year, considering. Do you uh, Did you see the our world championship roster? Oh, for hockey? Yeah. Where it was like basically just Buffalo Sabres plus a few other players. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good roster, man. Like, that's not. Montembo is a starting goalie. Well, all of our good Canadian players are in the playoffs right now. I mean, not McCarr, McKinnon, Crosby, Latang, well, Jari. I, I guess. I guess. But like. We have a non roster player. So we have Fantilli, so that's fine. Fantilli is good, but we have a guy who doesn't even isn't associated with any team. He scored a goal last game. <laughs> it's Latvia against Latvia. Yeah. Wait, did we? How? How? We won six nothing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I was it's like, Latvia, dude. It should have been like thirteen, fourteen, nothing. Well, I guess like most of like the elite players that just want to 
relax after the playoffs, maybe. Where is the world championship this year? It's not. I don't know. Let me check. I have no idea. I, it's actually even. On, I should. It, it should be on my phone here. I just <laughs> had it pulled up. Because I'm, I'm thinking, like, <clears throat> are they? Uh, what's it called? If it's if it's in a nice place, like. Then why didn't they go? Yeah, but I don't <laughs> think it's in a nice place. Anyways. Uh. Canada plays well, see, it's usually next. it's usually in a nice place though. Then Slovakia, then Kazakhstan. Oh, it's in it's in Finland and Latvia. Oh, well, so why didn't they go? <laughs> why didn't they Finland's go? Finland's kind of nice. Oh, dude, we're have you been to Finland? Finland? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> Latvia, Slovenia, Slovakia, Kazakhstan, Norway, Switzerland, Czech Republic are in our groups. What and. Okay, and we only played oh one Oh my game, god, so. the other one has Hungary, Germany, Finland, Austria, France, USA, Sweden, Denmark. Denmark's in first? Oh, because they played this... Hungary. Yeah. Hungary has a has a hockey team? Peru has a hockey team. Peru has a hockey team? Mexico has a hockey team. How? I don't know. I don't even know if they know what ice is down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the humidity. Could you imagine them having an a ice, ice rink, rink down there? Oh my god. Dude, they if they awesome. if they if they had an ice rink in Peru, we'd be just there all day every day. One hundred percent, because it's so yeah. hot. It's an absolute. Well, that hot. too, but it'd be a lot more fun, and then we just show everyone off. Oh, one hundred percent. I don't even know how to skate, and I'll still show everyone. <laughs> I've been skating in so long. I need to get back to that this next. Let me next winter. Anyways, but, thank you everybody for listening to the Anton Lander episode of the Can Ask Podcast, number fifty-seven. Yep. Hopefully, you'll tune in next week because it means I'll be in a good mood and I'll be able to record. And if not, then if not, then you probably won't hear for once in a month. But it's probably because I'll still be alive. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you when we see you. I guess. Uh, yeah. See you later. <laughs>